Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. A year or two ago, I did a video talking about the catalog settings in Lightroom. In that video, I mentioned that you should check the checkbox, automatically write changes into XMP. After that video posted, several people commented that Scott Kelby says you should not check that box. And Scott has two main reasons why that checkbox should not be checked. Well, I have one main reason why it should be checked. And in this video, I'm going to plead my case. I don't mean this as a shot to Scott Kelby. I have the utmost respect for him. I think he's a great photographer and he's done a lot for the photographic community. I just disagree with him about this one checkbox. Now, if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, catalog settings in Lightroom. In Lightroom, if you have a Mac and you go up to the Lightroom Classic menu, you'll see catalog settings. I believe this on a PC is under the edit menu. If I'm wrong about that, just correct me in the comments below. So when you go to catalog settings and you go to the third tab from the left, metadata, you'll notice there's a checkbox, automatically write changes into XMP. What that means? Well, the way Lightroom works, it's a non-destructive editor. That means when you do edits, it never writes those edits to the original file. Instead, it stores those edits in what is called the Lightroom catalog. You have the option though, of checking this box and then the edits will be stored not only in the Lightroom catalog but also into what's called a sidecar file. That sidecar file is kept in the same location as the original image and that sidecar file also contains the edits. So your original image still isn't getting written to, you just have edits stored in two different places, the Lightroom catalog and that sidecar file. Now let's look at them for a minute. Let's close this down. Let me right click right on the image and go down to show and finder. And it's going to go to the folder that contains all these images that are down here in the film strip. And you can see they're Nikon raw files, .nef. Um, they were taken with a Nikon ZFC. And you can see right next to that file has the same uh, name at the beginning. It has another file that's .xmp. That is the sidecar file. Now one of the reasons Scott gives for not having that checkbox checked and not creating these sidecar files is that they take up disk space. And that is true. Obviously, they're going to take up disk space. But look at the size of these files. 14 kilobytes, 5 kilobytes. It looks like the unedited images that are down here in the film strip have a sidecar file that is 5 kilobytes in size. And the edited images are between 10 and looks maybe 21 kilobit, kilobytes in size. So they're really small. You add up all these XMP files in this folder and they won't even, I don't think even make one megabyte. So they don't even really take up that much space. So unless you really have a nearly full hard drive, you probably don't want to do this. But most of us have enough room on our hard drive to create these tiny, tiny files. They're not that large. Now, the second reason Scott gives for not doing this is that it slows down your computer. Well, obviously, your computer has to write the file, so it is going to take time to write the file. But the files are so small, most computers, unless you have an antique, are going to be able to write these files in microseconds. So I don't think that's an issue for most cases. Most computers will handle this and you won't even notice your computer going any slower creating these small files. So those are his two main reasons why you should not do this. And again, if you have a computer that has a nearly full hard drive, you may not want to do this. He, you know, or if you have an older computer that is really old and you just maybe don't want to try it, right? Because it might slow it down. But on the other hand, there is one main reason I think you should create these files. Now I mentioned these, it, these files, the .xmp files contain your 
image edits. They also contain, uh, if you do anything in metadata, like you add a caption or you add keywords or anything like that, that also gets added to these .xmp files and also gets added to the Lightroom catalog as well. Now, with that said, it's been my experience that most of you, like probably 60% of you, use a laptop uh, for Lightroom. So you're using a laptop. Because you're using a laptop, your Lightroom catalog, the catalog files, not the image files, but the catalog files are probably kept on the main hard drive of that computer. So your image edits are kept on the main hard drive of that computer. Now some of you use an external hard drive to hold your images. So that's good. Or if you're not, you're backing up your images from your main hard drive to an external hard drive. And I think most of you aren't, um, for whatever reason, backing up your Lightroom catalog. You're just backing up your images. That's fine. What happens, let me give you a scenario. You have a computer. It could be a, not a laptop. It could even be a desktop. And you, by default now, when you first start using Lightroom for the first time ever, it's going to put the Lightroom catalog on the local hard drive. And most of us don't change that. We leave it there. Now, many of us still have those images on an external hard drive. If you write these XMP files, like I recommend, you'll have them on that external hard drive with those images, or if you still have your images on the local hard drive and you back them up to an external hard drive, you're also backing up these sidecar files as well. All that gets thrown on that extra hard drive. What if your Lightroom, or what if, your computer gets stolen? What if your hard drive crashes beyond repair and you don't have any backup for the, your Lightroom catalog? All your edits are gone unless you have these XMP files written. Then get a new computer, plug in your external hard drive, load up Lightroom. Lightroom has no images in it at all. Just import all these images into Lightroom and all your edits and metadata changes, including keywords and captions and all that stuff, star ratings, all that stuff loads with it. So you didn't lose any of your edits. That is the one main reason why I think you should have that checkbox checked. Create these .xmp files. Now, if you're one of the few people that has a computer and all your images are on the local drive, and your Lightroom catalog's on the local drive, and you don't back anything up, there's nothing I could do to help you there if, you're like, if your hard drive crashes or if the computer is stolen or anything like that. You really should, at the very least, back up your images to an external source, be it the cloud or an external hard drive. And if you do that, also create the XMP files so those go with it. And best, I mean, best practice is to also back up the Lightroom catalog as well and all your catalog files. That way, all your presets you might have purchased, third-party presets, third-party profiles, all that stuff comes with it as well. And then when you, uh, if your computer did crash and you had all that backed up on an external hard drive, then you don't even have to worry about the XMP files. You have your catalog backed up. And then you could just load everything, start it, you know, just click on your catalog file. It would open Lightroom like it was on your original computer. So that's the best way. But unfortunately, most people don't do it that way. Uh, let's be real. Most people just don't practice good backup, um, you know, techniques, let's say. Most people are a little negligent in that area. But if you create these XMP files, at least maybe you're helping yourself a little. So I hope I made myself clear why I think you should create these .xmp files. Now, I want to just mention one more thing and then we'll call it a day. Let's go back to catalog settings. Um, so you automatically write the changes into the XMP. You also have the option above that is to include develop settings in metadata inside JPEG, TIFF, PNG, and PSD files. If you have that checkbox checked, it will write your edits to your JPEG files, your TIFF files, your PNG files, and your PSD files. So then in those instances, it's actually not a non-destructive editor. It's a destructive editor. It's writing those edits to those files. Whether or not you want to do that, it's totally up to you. I don't have a recommendation one way or another on that. And also at the very bottom, you have the option to write date or tame changes into proprietary raw files. That means that if 
you edit the date or time of, let's say, a Canon CR2 file, a Sony file, a Nikon file, if you change the date or time, it will all write that date or time change to the raw file. Now, most often you probably don't want that checked, but where you may want that check, checked is if you're a wedding photographer and you are, have a partner, so two, two or more of you are shooting a wedding, and you want to sync up your cameras so they're like similar time so that you have this, the wedding sequence in the correct sequence between your two cameras, you may want to have that checked. That way, photographer A could adjust the times on his images so that they're in perfect sequence when compared to photographer B. Then photographer A could take his raw files and just give them to photographer B and they'll all be in sequence. So that's why you may want to do that. If you don't have that checked, those raw files will just have, even if you change the time in Lightroom, the raw files won't reflect the time change. So that is probably the only situation I could think of off the top of my head why you may want that uh, to be checked. Now, to wrap this up, the only other thing I want to talk about are DNG files. DNG files are a little different in that you won't, if you have this checkbox checked, it won't create an XMP file next to that DNG file. Instead, it will actually write those edits to that DNG file. So that is the one case where Lightroom will be destructive to a raw file because a DNG file is a raw file. So if you have this checked, and you use DNG files, your edits will get written to the DNG file if you have this checked. If you do not have that checked, it won't write the edits to the DNG file. It will store them only in the Lightroom catalog. So I hope that's clear. And actually, I, I think I do want to talk about one more thing, if I may. You know when you back up your catalog? Hopefully you're doing this. You can see I do it once a week when exiting Lightroom. Let me... Um, let me do this um, when Lightroom next exits, just for now. I want to show you something real quick, all right? And then I'll close down Lightroom, and then I'll get this pop up. Where you back up your catalog, um, first of all, I recommend you do back up your catalog. It depends how much you use Lightroom. If you only use it once a month, then back it up once a month. If you use it every other day, back it up once a week. And anyway, I have it backed up or showing your backups. See, they're going to my Dropbox folder. By default, Lightroom's going to put that backup to your um, same folder that contains your Lightroom catalog. So if your hard drive crashes, you lose your Lightroom catalog and you lose your backup. So change it. Go here to this dialog and change it. I have it going to Dropbox so it gets stored in the cloud. So change it to an external hard drive, to a cloud drive, anywhere other than your local hard drive because um, if your local hard drive crashes not only will you lose your Lightroom catalog you're going to also lose your backup so I don't know why by default Lightroom does that but it shouldn't it should put it somewhere else I guess most people though don't necessarily have an external hard drive or a cloud drive and Lightroom doesn't know that so it by default puts it on the local drive and one thing I should add some people I get emails now and then they want to put their Lightroom catalog on an external hard drive you can and that's good I guess because if your local hard drive crashes you still have your catalog on that external hard drive the problem I had with that is it really did slow down Lightroom when it's on the external hard drive Lightroom works best when your Lightroom catalog files are on your local hard drive backed up have that backup going to an external hard drive or to a cloud drive and then on top of that write those XMP files so that you have your edits stored with your images and have those images on an external hard drive or at the very least backed up to an external hard drive so I hope that made sense I know it started to get confusing in there but that's uh, my stance on this and I, I think um, not everyone needs to do it I agree with Scott um, in some instances, but I think most people should do it. Thank you. Everyone who watches my videos, I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>